Good evening and welcome to Columbus Grove High School where tonight WSN begins its coverage of Northwest Conference girls basketball for the 2023-24 season. A pair of undefeated teams, the Alanis Mustangs at 4-0 and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs at 3-0 will match up in tonight's game. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play. alongside Josiah Stober. Josiah, first night, everybody wants to win, especially maybe Grove here at home. Yeah, absolutely. You no know, big Northwest Conference game here early. As you said, both teams undefeated. First league game for both of these teams coming in. You know, as you said, Alan East 4 0, Columbus Grove 3 0. So it's key. You know, want to stay at top of the conference. So tonight should be a good game. Let's go through our starting lineup for Alan East. The Mustangs in blue and white this evening. Number 10, Savannah Brooks, 5'8 senior, averaging 16.5 points per game and 5.5 and rebounds. Number 12 is Ryland Jones, a 5'6 junior. She averages 11.8 points per game and four and a half rebounds. Number 14 is Aubrey Young, 5'2 senior. She averages about three a game. Number 23 is Soraya Jackson, six foot senior at five and a half points per game and 4.3. And number 50 is Taylor Nichols, six foot junior, averaging about four rebounds per game. For Columbus Grove, number two, Lauren Achmoody, 5'7 junior, averaging 22 a game and 6.3 rebounds. Number 10 is Jade Siefker. Jay's a 5'6 senior at 5.6 a game. Number 21, Kendall Palti, 5'9 sophomore, 4.7. Abby Stecksholdy wears number 22. She's a 5'6 senior, averaging 7 a game. And Nicole Nesby wears number 23. She's a 6 foot sophomore, averaging 11.3 and 6.3 rebounds. The tip goes to Columbus Grove. Our officials tonight Mike Basinger, Aza Donaldson, and Jim Troyer. Columbus Grove won our JV game this evening. And just a couple of quarters of action this evening. This is Kendall Palti into the lane. Ball's taken away, however, we're headed the other way as Savannah Brooks. Savannah goes cross court, ball stolen, however, by Achmoody. And yeah, both teams a little sloppy with the ball to begin, but a great steal there by Ryland Jones as she's able to take the ball, but turns it over and another sh shot there by Grove as they get their own rebound. And then we get a push, the first foul of the basketball game will go against Aubrey Young. Saw Lauren Akmudi a moment ago, 10 th made three point field goals in three games. They averaged 60.7, they gave up 28.7. Does Columbus Grove? This is Akmudi with the basketball. Nesby posted up inside, now they're going to set a screen. Yeah, Columbus Grove the, yep. just working it around the perimeter here. Now Pulling it back out, set up a play here. Abby Stecksholdy with the basketball. Abby penetrate dribbles, and she will get called for traveling. Two turnovers there and two possessions for this Grove team. They come in averaging 16.3 turnovers. Trying to get the ball in bounds, and finally they find Aubrey Young. Aubrey Young will break the press to get across midcourt. She pulls up a jump shot. That doesn't go. Battle for the rebound. Nesby tips it over to teammate Abby Stecksholdy. Played over a minute. The ball's tipped out of bounds by Ryland Jones. Our officials tonight, Mike Basinger, Aza Donaldson, Jim Troyer. This is Akmudi doubled up right away in the corner. Has to kick it back out. Stecksholder goes into the lane. Little runner bounces around, gets her own rebound. Abby Stecksholder back on top to Lauren Achmoody. Looked inside to Nesby, couldn't get it there. And perimeter jumper bounces around. Nope, Nesby tips it over. And she finds a teammate, and the ball gets. The ball was tipped to Kendall Palti, and we're going to get a foul. Let's see that one goes against. Number 50, Taylor Nichols. So a couple of fouls on Allen East here in the first less than two minutes. Number 20 will check in for the Mustangs. And that is Dylan Miller, 5'6", junior. Nesby inside, spins to the lane, scores the first basket. Yeah, great Nicole play Nesby. there out of bounds for Nesby, is it? Great screen there on the baseline. She was able to cut to the basket and easy bucket to open up the scoring for this Columbus Grove team. Savannah Brooks. They put five on the perimeter. She gets into the lane. 12 foot jumper will go for her. Savannah Brooks is on the board. 
5'8 senior, averaging 16 and a half a game. A little 3-2 zone press. Nesby into the corner, skip pass. And this jumper will go up from Abby Steckshold. He bounces around. The rebound comes to Savannah Brooks. I think we're going to get our first Columbus Grove foul. Yeah, Abby found herself a little wide open there off of that pressure. Just wasn't able to knock down that three and foul on the rebound. Elise Fortman will enter for Columbus Grove. She's a 5'6 sophomore. Both of these teams play a lot of young players. Jones, she is matched up with Fortman who just entered the game. And now Aubrey Young back to Ryland Jones. In the lane she goes. Nesby's there to stop that penetration dribble. Nice back door cut, but unable to finish. There's a tip put back in. That one will go. Sharia Jackson cleans up the miss. It's 4-2 early on. Allen East, and we are going to get a Columbus Grove timeout. Timeout for WSN. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online or set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all our area athletes and go Mustangs. And R.D. Jones Excavating is sponsoring our scoreboard this evening, which currently shows Allen East with four, Columbus Grove with two, and a quick Bulldog timeout. Soraya Jackson found herself for an easy bucket prior to that timeout as we see Allen East come back out in that full court pressure. We'll see if they change it up, but it looks like now it's just some man-to-man -man pressure. Lauren Achmoody will advance the basketball. She's going to get a screen from Nesby. And she goes into the lane. A little runners fall short. She tips it back in bounds. Nice hustle play. Yeah, I believe Here's that was Nesby inside. Sexually. Yes. Nesby, oh, rolls in the lane. Nope, tips it around. And rebound eventually to Savannah Brooks. Here's Jones. Into the lane she goes. Little runner bounces around. And we're going to get a rebound foul. Nesby had position on Soraya Jackson. Have yeah, seen that a couple times by this Allen East team trying to get the ball up quickly. Jump stops in that paint, just wasn't able to knock it down. Then we got a foul over the back. We got a sub coming in. Taylor Nickel back into the basketball game. Three team fouls, and we've played not quite half of the opening quarter for Allen East. Here's a pass down court and. Yeah, went out of bounds on the pressure. It looked like Columbus Grove might have had an easy layup there, but it was Nicole Nesby just throwing a little bit too hard to her teammate and goes out of bounds and turnover Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove brings in number 14, Allison Thompson, a 5'7 sophomore. Allison averages 4.3 points per game and four rebounds. Trying to work into the lane that time was Brooks, or by was Miller. She couldn't get loose. Here's Miller, three-point shot. Rattles out. The rebound, however, came to Savannah Brooks. And you saw the results of Savannah's action. She's on the board again. Got four now looking at five. Just a strong rebound there by Savannah Brooks. Just muscled her way up and drew a little bit of contact. Now opportunity for a three-point play. Nicole Nesby will get the foul. Savannah Brooks, 5'8", senior, and she's got five of the seven points for the Mustangs early on. Here's full court pressure again. Nesby breaks it, but she got trapped on the sideline. And that ball stolen. We'll head the other way, Young. She finds Jones. This is Young again. Splash the three ball. There's Aubrey Young. Aubrey Young, Young nails a three, and we're going to get a second Columbus Grove timeout here at 337 in the opening quarter. And they trail by eight, Josiah. Yeah, we've seen Allen East just get the ball up really quickly. And we saw that there, quick drive to the baseline and a kick for that open three. And then we saw Aubrey Young knock down that first three of the game and extend this lead now to eight points. We had our first free throw of the basketball game a moment ago on, made by Savannah Brooks. Our free throws that are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. 
Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Quick 10-2 lead for the, home, for the visiting team. Good start for them. Yeah, and we see that pressure leading to some offense for this Mustang team. You know, got a steal, got that trap there in that, that difficult spot on Nesby and turned her over. And then we saw a quick transition up the floor and found that, found Aubrey Young there wide open, knocks down the big bucket for this Mustang team. So Brianna Brooks has five in the game. Aubrey Young has that three ball a moment ago. And Soria Jackson has another basket for their 10 points. Nicole Nesby has the only hoop so far, and she has the basketball for Columbus Grove. 1-2-2 two, two zone press. And headed to the rim and drawing contact. That will be Elise Fortman. The foul is assessed to Taylor Nichols, and that becomes her second foul. And the free throw line will be Elise Fortman. She has not shot a free throw yet this year in her opening three games. First free throw by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Her first points of the night. And Elise Fortman did a great job there, breaking that pressure, ripped through, saw a lane to the basket, drew some contact, an opportunity to cut into this Allen East lead. Bryn Richardson, number 24, 5'6", sophomore, will enter for the Mustangs. And both of those free throws are good. Here comes some full court pressure, man to man from Columbus Grove, but Jones breaks that easily. And tries to get to the rim and we got a held ball situation and it favors Allen East. Yeah, Columbus Grove continues that full court pressure, but Ryland Jones with her speed just rips through and has you know, broken all the pressure so far Columbus Grove's given her. Lots of substitutions in this game as Ruth Myers enters now for Columbus Grove. She wears number five. She's a 5'5 five, five sophomore. And Jones skates into the lane and scores. Ryland Jones' first basket. 12-4 Mustangs with 3.06 to go in the opening quarter. And we're going to get a travel. Kendall Palti got in a bit of a hurry. Grove continues to struggle with this pressure. Their fifth turnover already here in that in this first quarter. So, yeah, we'll we have, we've not played five minutes no. yet. Yeah, yeah, especially for a team that only comes in averaging 16 turnovers a game, five early's a little bit uncharacteristic for this Grove team. Savannah Brooks gets cut off trying to go to the rim, pass inside, spin move inside by Nes, uh, not by Nesby, but by Fred Jackson. She will draw contact with the free throw line. That goes to Nicole Nesby, and she becomes the first Bulldog with two fouls. Here's Jackson's free throws. And she makes the least famous recipe chicken free throw. And we'll see how that foul plays out with Nesby, who comes in second leading scorer for this Columbus Grove team. Has to go sit on the bench for a little bit, and we'll see how long she stays out of this game. Jade Seifker replaced her. Another made free throw. Both teams perfect in the line so far. Here's that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone press with a 10-point lead for the Mustangs. Pass ahead into the rim and finishing off glass is Ruth Myers. Broke the press that time. Yeah, first time tonight. They've had some success and got the ball quickly. And we'll see if they can kind of calm down now and play a little bit of defense. Here's Ryland Jones has to pick the basketball up and finally finds Brooks. Ball's tipped away from her. And Savannah will draw another foul. That foul is Allison Thompson's foul. Each team has four now, so with the final 222 of this opening quarter, we'll be shooting double fouls on every situation. That's the first free throw missed today. And Brooks will get another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. That one is good. Six for her. Tried to pass ahead, but couldn't get it over the outstretched hands of Dylan Miller. Into the lane goes Jones, and that rebound is secured by Jade Seifker. And Lauren Ockmoody will push the other way. Picked up by Bryn Richardson. Can't get away from her. 
Moody again, averaging 22 a game. Yeah, only so far in this first quarter, man marking her, not making it easier for her to get it. And hasn't had a whole lot of wide open looks so far. They ran two girls after her. Three ball, bounces around. No, nice rebound inside and powering up inside on the next extra opportunity is Kendall Palti. And Kendall will get to go to the free throw line. Soraya Jackson becomes the second Mustang to have two fouls in the opening quarter. And Kendall Palti, a 75% free throw shooter, goes to the line. That will bring in number 32. That's Ella Miller, a 5'7 junior. Will enter for Allen East. Palti again. And that will bounce in for her. 15-7. Long pass ahead. And ahead of the pack was Bryn Richardson, but she couldn't handle the pass and goes out of bounds. Yeah, only the second turnover of the night for Allen East, so opportunity for Columbus Grove to see if they can cut into this lead. Pass finds its way to Ruth Myers, and then she finds Palti to bring it up back to Myers. Here's Ock Moody. Good move into the goal, and she will draw a shooting foul because it's the old bonus situation. The foul will go to Bryn Richardson. And the free throw line will go Lauren Ock Moody. Would you say 89% from the free throw line is pretty good, yep. Josiah? Yep, eight for nine on the season so far, so. And she makes the first of her Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Back into the game comes Elise Fortman. Just up their percentage right there, 90%. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yep. And that one is dead center as well. And Columbus Grove has got it back to just a six-point game here with 118 to go in our opening quarter. On our R.D. Jones excavating scoreboard tonight. Jones beats the press. Ryland Jones works the lane. And she traveled. Took the ball up and came back down with it. Ock Moody throws it ahead. It's two on one the other way. Pass across the lane, but hustling back that time and knocking out of bounds was Bryn Richardson. Yeah, good hustle there by Richardson. As it looked like there was going to be a wide open layup for Elise Fortman, but good hustle to get back and knock it out of bounds. Palti. She's going to come off a screen, flash inside. Here's a three that's going to go up. That one will be long from Elise Fortman, and ball will stay here with Columbus Grove. And Ock Moody will be the inbounder. That ball's tipped and unable to save it, however, is Dylan Miller. Dylan's played well here. Off the bench for Coach Aaron Montgomery. Doc Moody in the backcourt. High screen from Palti. Doc Moody step back three. Got that one to go. That's her 11th of the year in game number four. Well, I think those free throws helped her kind of see that ball go through the net. We've seen these last couple possessions where she's a little bit more aggressive looking for her shot and was able to knock down that big three to, to cut the lead to three. Columbus Grove has been down 10 at one point. That ball doesn't fall. And in the scrap for the rebound, it comes to Jade Seifker. Here comes Columbus Grove's Allison Thompson. Ock Moody off the screen, gets into the lane, and goes off last, and will draw contact. Yeah, I like that play there by Grove on transition as they drove right at Ock Moody's defender and was able to do a little handoff. And she was able to turn the corner and 
opportunity here to knock down a couple free throws. Dylan Miller got the foul, and free throw bounces a little long for Ock Moody. Comes her second Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw of this possession. 4.2 seconds left for the Mustangs. That one splashes down. Long pass ahead. Akmudi had a chance. That Jones goes to the rim and draws a foul from Lauren Akmudi. She does so with 1.2 remaining in the quarter. And to the free throw line will go Ryland Jones. Pretty good stat numbers for her on the season, Josiah. 11.8 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 4.3 steals, and 2.8 assists. And That's pretty good. Done a really good job tonight is handling that pressure, being the the one one lady press breaker there for this Allen East team. And uh, Columbus Grove loves to put a little pressure, and she's been able to break it almost every single time. That one spins out. She splits the pair, and at the end of the opening quarter, Grove has made a comeback. But Allen East will take a lead at the break. 16-13. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Second half action to back to begin from Columbus Grove. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all our area athletes and go Mustangs. 16-13, Allen East. Yeah, as we look at some of the stats here, uh, leading for the home team, uh, Lauren Ockmoody with six points on the night, leading her team. Look for Allen East. Savannah Brooks also has six for the Mustang team. Nesby back in the game. She's trying to post up down inside to throw it down into her, and she lost the basketball. She was battling inside with Savannah Brooks, and I think it went off of Nesby. It did. And it will be Allen East basketball. How many turnovers do we have in the opening quarter? Six for Columbus Grove. Three for Allen East. Here's Ryland Jones. She is matched up with Ock Moody. He dribbles around her to beat the press, pull up jumper, rolls out, and Nesby rebounds. I've yeah, seen that a couple times tonight from Ryland Jones. Is able to get to that uh, into the paint pretty easily tonight. Just hasn't been able to knock down that shot. Ock Moody comes off a Nesby screen. Here's a pass inside. Nesby gets it blocked from behind. And Allen East wins the scramble for the basketball. I think Savannah Brooks blocked it from behind. Three on two the other way. Brooks heads to the rim and will draw a foul from Ock Moody. That is Lauren's second foul. Opening foul of quarter number two also as we reset the, the fouls. We'll see how those fouls play out as that's two on her and also two on Nicole Nesby. They're two leading scorers on the night, but both of them stay on the floor. Jones working. Scoop shot, nope. Rebound on the backside, Brooks. She's trying to post up inside. She's down low, spin move, scores. They find Savannah Brooks inside for points seven and eight. Good post-up move there by Savannah Brooks as she was able to go up over two players. And it looks like the ball went out of bounds on the trap situation from Aubrey Young, and Columbus Grove will keep the basketball, and Abby Stecksholdy will be the inbounder as Kendall Palti enters the game. Also entering will be Taylor Nichols back in the game. She's got a couple of fouls in quarter number one. Interested to see Josiah, which post player, whether it be Nichols or uh, Nesby, picks up foul number three. Long three misses, backside rebound, comes to Aubrey Young. Jones ahead of the pack, and she throws it to Ock Moody. Good athletic play by Lauren. Brooks bounce passes inside. You have to give it back out to the perimeter. Jones, ball fakes, goes into the lane, and blocking foul, count it. Uh, what an athletic move there by Ryland Jones with the left. Drew some contact and a little hoop shot, or shoot, hoop shot. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Kind of just went in. It surely did, and Ryland Jones has five, looking at six. The foul went to Kendall Palti. Jones back at the rim. Rebound comes to Kendall Palti. First four points of this quarter have gone the way of the Mustangs. Steck Schulte looks inside to Nesby. 
She's doubled up, has to pass it back out. Hawk Moody right now being harassed by Dylan Miller. Here's a three that's going to go up. Bounces around, and the rebound comes to Ryland Jones. Pushes the other way. Pull up jumper, short. Tipped back in, but Akmudi has it. She's going to throw it ahead. Palti ahead of the pack. Palti was headed to the rim, and she is going to pick up. I think that foul will go against Taylor well, Nichols, wait. I believe. Yeah, let's see how they call it. That's what it looked like, didn't it? Taylor Nichols picks up foul number three, the six foot junior. And Kendall Palti will go to the free throw line and shoot a Lee's famous recipe chicken pair of free throws. Kind of answered that question, didn't it? Taylor Nichols is the one who picked up the third foul. Cole Nesby's still in the game. Soraya Jackson will enter, as does Ella Miller. Here's Palti's second free throw. Splits the pair again like she did the first time she went to the free throw line. Brooks. Savannah Brooks trying to work the lane. Can't get away from Allison Jackson. Here's Nesby's rebound. Throws it ahead to Ock Moody in transition. Steck shoulder on the baseline and she has to give it up to Palti. And Palti lost the ball and eventually ends up in the hands of Ella Miller and then over to Dylan Miller. Ella Miller from the foul line jump shot, bounces around, rebound to Abby Steckshoulder. Yeah, neither team finding it easy here on the offensive end. About a two minute drought of scoring here. Palti for three, rebound Brooks. Well, neither team really shy to <laughs> run out the shot clock, even though it's not a shot clock in high school, but um, you know, really getting the ball up the floor quickly and trying to shoot it. And once again here. Ella Miller got open at the foul line. That time she nailed it. Averages 8.3 points per game. That's her first two of the season of tonight. It's back to an eight-point lead for Alanis Mustangs. Steck Schulte scrambling for the basketball and then hopping on as Aubrey Young. And the arrow will favor Alan East. Good hustle play, got the ball away. Yeah, we like to see when players are willing to dive on the court for the an extra possession there. And we saw that from this Alan East team really getting after it on the defensive end. Jade Seifker's in, Nicole Nesby will get a break. Jones working against Jade Seifker, gets a high screen. Bryn Richardson throws it inside and trying to get away from Aubrey Young and we're going to get a held ball. This one will favor Columbus Grove. Allen East uh, defeated, uh, the, they won the McDonald's tournament. They defeated Arlington 56-38 and then Bluffton 55-37. They've had a pair of other wins since that time. Beat Kenton 55-36 and, and uh, Lima Central Catholic 55-15 to go 4-0 to start the season. Columbus Grove has wins over Elida, Shawnee, and Continental. That was a Putnam County League game. So they were 1-0 in that league. Akmudi up and scores. Wonderful move for Akmudi. Point seven and eight for her. A big bucket there by Grove. Uh, only a third point of the quarter for this Grove team and uh, stop that drought. So we'll see if they can get a stop here on the defensive end. Richardson comes off the screen. Akmudi with a steal headed to the rim. And she lost it. Dives on the floor and gets it. There's a three that's going to go up, and that three ball will go down for Allison Thompson. Her first basket of the evening cuts the lead to three. Miller trying to get into the lane. Doubled up, has to give it back out on front. 
Well, so far here in this game, it's really been the game of runs. Allen East getting out quickly in the quarter, and then Columbus Grove clawing themselves back in. An opportunity here is to see if they can cut it to a one point or even tie the ball game up. Jay Seeker sec secured the rebound. Ahmadi with the basketball now, matched up with Bryn Richardson, going to get a high screen. Goes Akmudi, and she gets into the lane again, and scoop shot, that one doesn't go. And a contested rebound comes down to Dylan Miller, and we're going to get a foul that will go against Columbus Grove. Well, we'll sort of who that foul went to. I guess it went to number 21, Kendall Palti, her second. We're going to get a timeout. This one will go to Allen East. Timeout WSN on watching high school basketball on WSN. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken, where home style happens here. Free throws fairly even in the basketball game this evening. That timeout went to Allen East. Their lead has dropped to three, and they have called their first timeout here in quarter number two. 158 to go before halftime. Opportunity here for Grove to set up their full court pressure. So far, it's just been man to man, and we'll see how this timeout if they try something different. But it looks like they're sticking to that and just making Jones dribble the ball up the court. Against Jade Siefker, pass to the wing. Young. There's Miller going to the rim, gets cut off. Bounce pass in the lane, that's trip loose. There's Dylan Miller again. Savannah Brooks comes off a screen. Good defense this possession until Jones gets loose at the foul line, but a shot won't go, and we're going to get a rebound. Contact on that rebound will go to Savannah Brooks. That's her first foul. That becomes the second foul this quarter for Allen East. Columbus Grove has three with 91 seconds to go. Ball's tipped, but comes down to Seifker and Nesby. Nesby works the lane. Seifker's going to get a three look. Jade Seifker lights the lamp from the corner. And we're tied at 22. Groves come all the way back. They were down 10 at one point in the first quarter. Brooks works the lane, wants to go up, and she will draw contact. Oh, a couple got times foul number with, three, Josiah. Yeah, with Savannah Brooks is understanding when her team needs a bucket or needs some points. And the point score leader for this Allen East Mustang team and knocks down the first free throw and was able to drive and now put her team up by one. Her ninth point in Columbus Grove, which had gotten back even. And now let's see what they do with Lauren Ockmoody with three fouls here and a minute to go before the break. Makes both of them. Savannah Brooks becomes the first double point scorer in the basketball game. Ockmoody stays in the game. Nesby working down the floor and lost the ball off her foot. And we will get a held ball that will favor Allen East. Arbor Young got to the ball quickly and here comes a sub in. That will be, now we're gonna get Ockmoody out of the game as she's replaced by Abby Steckscholdy. Allen East with a two-point lead. Jones. Now okay, Joe's just deciding to slow it down a little bit here. I, I do this every year. Okay, this offense we just saw this delay game was yep. invented by Clemson back in the '60s. It's called the Tiger Pause, P-A-U-S-E, Clemson Tigers. Yeah. And they put that two girls in the corner, and then they put free throw, and then three of them play catch with the ball out front until they're ready to go score, which they are right here. Now we'll see if Allen East can extend this lead. Six seconds to go. Jones turns the corner, bounce pass goes across the lane, and nobody can get to it. So with 3.1 to go, Columbus Grove will have a last chance to score. That will bring Nesby in the game with her two fouls, and Ock Moody with three. 
And they want to get the last shot here of this first half. Inbound, throw it to Nesby. She's going to get up and throw it from the volleyball line. And it was just short of the rim, right on line, but just short. We played 16 minutes from this Northwest Conference opener in the 2023-24 season. Allen East 24, Columbus Grove 22 and a half. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're ready for third quarter action here from Columbus Grove. Our scoreboard has been sponsored by R.D. Jones Excavating. Serving your excavating needs for over 50 years, visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all our athletes and go Mustangs. Josiah, what kind of numbers you have from the first half? Yeah, as we look at the leading scores here for this Allen East Mustang team with the two-point lead on the scoreboard, uh, Savannah Brooks with 10 points. Ryland Jones has five. Uh, Soraya Jackson has four. Aubrey Young has three. And Ella Miller has two for the Mustangs. And for our home Columbus Grove Bulldogs, um, leading the scoreboard is Lauren Ockmoody has eight points on the night, comes in averaging 22 points. So Allen East has done a really good job in the first half, uh, keeping her at bay. Um, also for the Grove team, Jade Seeker with three, Allison Thompson with three, with two, Ruth Myers, Kendall Palti, Nicole Nesby, and Elise Fortman all have two. And that third foul to Lauren Ockmoody late in the half could play a big part of what happens here in quarters number three and four. It'll be Columbus Grove basketball first here in the third set of eight minutes this evening. They trail by as many as 10, got it tied up, and now trail by two. Here's Nesby at the top of the circle. She has a pair of fouls, but did not get foul number three in the opening half. Defense from Allen East, Nicole, or Taylor Nichols, who wears number 50 for Allen East, has three fouls, and she did not start this half, although she did start the opening half. Got to travel to be Allen East bas basketball. And that's really been the story of the first half for this Grove team. The turnovers, unofficially 10 turnovers there in the first half and starting off their first possession with a turnover here. So really has limited their offensive attack tonight. Steck showed in Bryn Richardson and Bryn Richardson throws across court. And Lauren Ockmoody is there to intercept the basketball. She goes around Bryn Richardson and goes to the rim and will get a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw for her efforts. See who the foul is assessed to two. It will go to Aubrey Young, her second, and to the free throw line, Lauren Ockmoody. She is three for four there this evening. Here's how you know you're a good free throw shooter, Josiah. You're four for five, and your percentage goes down. <laughs> she was shooting 89% coming into this evening. She's now four for five, make it five for six. And she becomes a double-figure scorer with 10 points. And we're tied at 24. First Northwest Conference basketball game of this season for both of these teams. Ryland Jones, Savannah Brooks inside. She spins, working on Mock Moody. Has to give it back up. Richardson throws it, and she tried to find teammate Aubrey Young, but the ball went into the backcourt and over and back call. I think this will be, if, if Columbus Grove scores, Josiah, I think this will be the first lead of the game. Yeah, I agree, because I think they were down 10-2 to 2, yep. um, in the first quarter. So you're right. I think if they put a point on the board, first lead of the night. Abby Steckscholdy. Both teams played a lot of players in the opening half. Steckscholdy is going to get a screen from Nesby, and it doubled up and traveled. You know, they jumped out on the screen, did Sarai Jackson and uh, Aubrey Young, and forced to travel. We've split 48 points down the middle here from Columbus Grove. Six and a half to go in our third quarter action. Ryland Jones. Penetration dribble, pass goes across the lane and unable to secure the pass was Jackson. And Palti's headed the other way. Kendall Palti goes to the rim and finishes. Kendall Palti's third and fourth point puts her team up 26-24. Brooks in a hurry. Akmudi from behind and 
Palti and Brooks fight over it, and it will stay with Allen East. Kendall Palti trying to do it on both ends there. Is, took a strong layup there on the offensive end and comes back and tries to get her hands on the ball. And just possession back to Allen East. Jones being guarded by Jade Seifker. She's going to pull up for a three. Ryland Jones banks it. That doesn't go, and Ockmoody rebounds. Empty possession, Mustangs. Ockmoody looking for somebody. Finally finds Seifker. And that will be knocked out of bounds by Brooks. Kind of Allen East Mustang basketball this weekend. We've got their boys game on Friday night with Lima Central Catholic. That game will air on Saturday on a WOSN. Lima Central Catholic with a win last weekend at the Elida Tip-Off Classic. So we'll have their boys game with Allen East. Friday night they will air on Saturday evening as they throw it in the backcourt to Ockmoody. He's going to get a ball screen from Nesby. And they do a good job of helping out on that one. Here's a pass inside to Nesby, and she gets fouled inside as she tried to go through Island Jones. I saw the Allen East fans hoping for a charge there, but no call was made. And Columbus Grove got the ball into Nesby down low, and she was able to turn and opportunity to extend this lead now for Columbus Grove. Nicole had not been to the free throw line yet this evening. She is a 57% free throw shooter on the year, trying to shoot those Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. One of the things I like about Ryland Jones, you know, she's very active defensively. That's her first foul of the evening. Smart player. Nesby makes the second and increases her team's lead to three. Mustang's not on the board yet here in Quarter number three, almost three minutes into this. Miller, uh, Brooks goes off glass, and now they're on the board as Savannah Brooks wheels into the lane and has her points number 11 and 12. He's done that a couple times tonight where Allen East has struggled to score, and Brooks comes up with a big bucket to cut it now into this lead to bring it down to one. And we're going to get an offensive foul inside on Nicole Nesby to become her third foul. But honestly, Josiah was watching the basketball itself. I didn't see the foul that took place, but that was the call. Yeah, I think the official saw that one arm kind of holding the Allen East defender back. And, you know, been really physical down there in the post when we see Nesby and also, Jackson down there battling for position. That ball got kicked out of bounds by Allison Thompson. So Nesby has three fouls, as does the post player for Allen East, Taylor Nichols. Jackson to enter the basketball and does so to Brooks. Allen East has only won the Northwest Conference in girls basketball once. And that was back in the 94-95 uh, season. So trying to break a long drought here this season. And that pass goes out of bounds. Columbus Grove, they have won the league six times. They went five in a row from 2016 to 2020. And they're trying to get back to that championship mark as well. But some really good basketball teams around this year in that league. Jefferson's good. Crestview's good. Um, some teams I, that we know are good. And we're waiting for some of the rest of them to see how they pop up as the season comes along. Nesby powers up inside. Goes through post player and scores. She's got five in the game. The lead goes back to three. Yeah, as you said, some really good teams here. In girls basketball in the NWC. And Really about four or five teams um, have a chance this year. Uh, all still trying to look up to Delphus Jefferson. Tough Jefferson won it last year. Nesby stepped right up and impeded the progress of the Allen East Mustang. It did so without making contact. So we get a travel call, then Nesby gets a break on the bench. Halfway through quarter number three, she gets a seat. Penetration dribble, cross court pass is knocked out of bounds by Savannah Brooks. 
You're starting to see Columbus Grove have a little more success against that pressure. Allen East did a really good job of turning them over in that first half. And uh, Columbus Grove starting to figure it out, getting that ball to the middle, um, and then getting it wide. And we've seen some success here in this second half. So far, it's been a seven and two quarter Columbus Grove as Bryn Richardson enters the basketball game. Paul T. Little flex cut action on the baseline. Penetration dribble and the runner will not fall for Thompson. And the ball will go over to Allen East. Rylan Jones getting her first break in the basketball game right now. Up the sideline. Goes out, Aubrey Young inside to Nichols, and Nichols goes up strong, and she will draw the third foul from Kendall Palti. So Taylor Nichols to the free throw line. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Taylor Nichols makes the first free throw. It's her first point of the basketball game, six foot junior. And that one bounces around to Palti. Still a two point lead, Allen East. There's a three ball that'll go up from Elise Fortman. And rebound to Young. Aubrey trying to break pressure with Palti guarding her. Good cross dribble. Pass to the corner. Miller goes into the lane and over penetrated, but she's able to save it to Richardson. Richardson with a three look. And tracked down the corner by Akmudi. Lauren has played this entire quarter with three fouls. Safely done so. Yeah, both teams in the last possession. Finding some space on that three-point line. Just haven't been able to knock it down. Ock Moody goes to the lane, and she will draw a foul. This will be her second shooting foul this quarter. Savannah Brooks gets foul number two. Ock Moody's got ten points in the game. And now 11 on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Got three subs coming in. Nesby, Steck, Scholdy, and I think that's Jade Seifker. Yes, Jade Seifker becomes the third sub in. This will be the largest lead of the game for Columbus Grove right there. They go up four. And that will also allow Jackson to re-enter. Soraya Jackson. And lead is at four. Jones working. Penetration dribble. Pat, she gets cut off. Pass inside, and I think Nesby's gonna get foul number four. Yeah, that's a big foul there on Nesby as she'll have to sit down. And Still 2.15 left to go here in this third quarter. And coming in is Kendall Palti, who also has, I believe, three fouls. Uh, she does, and each team has three in the quarter with 2.15 to go. Nichols tried to post up inside. That ball's tipped away. Brooks gets it, and Brooks can't finish. And powered up for the score inside is Soraya Jackson. Soraya Jackson is going to get an and one. Allison Thompson gets foul number two for her. Team's fourth of the quarter. Jackson has six. And now seven, and she is a perfect three for three from the foul line this evening. It's a one-point game. Ball's tipped and saved. Nope, couldn't quite get to it in time by... Jones. Hey, Ryan Jones just showing off her, her quickness and her speed. Like I said, known for 
you know, that defense and was able to get a hand on that ball and just looked like she was, that toe was on the end line. Paul T, penetration dribble. Right hand shot doesn't fall for her. The rebound came to Taylor Nichols and will go the other way. Jones into the lane, scoop shot, no rebound. Akmudi, she's off to the races. Pull up jumper, Lauren Akmudi scores. She has 14 in the game now. And the lead goes back to three. Really smart rebound there. You saw her kind of tip it out into space and use that athleticism to get out. Saw that the defender had kind of cut her off, but pulled up for the eight foot shot and knocks it down. Jones gets into the lane, turnaround jumper for Ryland Jones. Nichols with the rebound, but she is standing on the end line. Ryland Jones has just five points tonight, averaging 11.8. She's made a lot of contributions handling the basketball, and there's a steal. Brooks to the lane, Brooks left-handed finish, yes! Savannah Brooks with 14 off a good steal by Albert Young. And we saw Lauren Ockmudi not able to challenge, has three fouls and just lets Brooks go up and finish. And now we have an opportunity for Allen East to retake the lead here, only down one. Jones to the lane, and the foul occurred before her shot attempt. Jade Seifker gets foul number two, and this will be the last to take it out of bounds. No, it was her fifth, the team's fifth foul. Look at the wrong side of the scoreboard. So Ryland Jones will get a pair of free throws. She struggled there a bit this evening. She just won for four from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Jones Excavating is sponsoring our scoreboard this evening. If she makes this, we're tied, and she does. Nichols will take a break, and Dylan Miller will replace her. 48.8 to go here in the third quarter. Hawk Moody matched up with Aubrey Young. Working, working. And she gets it over midcourt, tipped out of bounds. Aubrey Young putting some pressure on. Now Aubrey Young, the last two possessions, making it difficult for Lauren Hawk Moody to get the ball up the floor, just keeping her in front, using that speed, those quick hands to get her. Knock it out of bounds. Long three goes for Lauren Ockmoody. She now has 17 in the game. That is her second three-point field goal this evening and 12th of the season. Jones to the lane, left-handed shot will not fall for her. In the scramble for the rebound, Dylan Miller couldn't keep the ball in the field of play with 18-8 to go and a three-point Bulldog lead. You can control Lauren Akmudi just so long, you know? She had eight points at halftime. She's got nine in this quarter. Now we're starting to see her look for her shot a little bit more. Uh, this is one of those teammates that likes to pass and get her teammates open, but we've seen it here in this quarter. She's finding her range now. Now we got the ball back to her with two seconds to go. Step back three at the buzzer, and it goes! Lauren Ockmoody back-to-back threes to end the quarter. Those six points will give her team a 39-33 lead after three. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back at Columbus Grove, it is 39-33. Our scoreboard is brought to you by R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all our athletes. Go Mustangs. Mustangs with a 17-9 quarter. They're up six now, heading to the fourth. Yeah, two big threes at the end of the half by Lauren Ockmoody. A step back three as the time ran out, giving her team a six-point lead here. Allen East now has possession to see if they can cut into this lead to start the fourth. Jones, she wants to get a three look. That bounces off the rim and rebound to Ockmoody, and she will be fouled. 
by Taylor Nichols, who now has four fouls. Akbudi has 20. Nicole Nesby has five, four for Kendall Palti. Savannah Brooks has 14, Ryland Jones six, and seven for Jackson. Soraya Jackson for Allen East. And the ball will go with Columbus Grove. Knocked out of bounds by Young. Hawk Moody and Brooks now, and this is Palti. Palti would like to work on Taylor Nichols, who has four fouls. Right here, Palti. That five out on the perimeter, a lot of pass and cut going on, and there's the fifth foul that will go against Taylor Nichols. Now we see Columbus Groves made the adjustment towards the middle of that uh, third quarter, taking out a lot of their size and just putting guards in. It's been difficult for this Allen East team to guard all five of the positions there on the floor, and looks like Allen East has decided to go a little small also. Taylor Nichols, who spent a lot of the evening on the bench in foul trouble, had a single point this evening and will foul out with 7.25 to go in the game. Palti works inside. Looking at a three, but unable to get one off is Thompson. This will be a three. That three will go. Splash it down for Elise Fortman. She's got five points in the game. That's her first three and a nine-point lead. We're going to get a foul then by Ruth Myers. Ruth has a single foul. Here comes Nesby back in the game. I think very quickly looking at my score sheet, five three-point field goals for Columbus Grove, one for Allen East this evening. Therein lies part of the difference this evening. Yeah. Jones playing bump and run this Aubrey time. Aubrey Young, of, yep, yeah. was the only one for Allen East. Yep, Myers, <laughs> thank you. Myers gets a, her second foul in just a few seconds of action. Each team has two now here in the quarter. Jones in the backcourt. Savannah Brooks. Savannah under pressure. Bounce pass inside, Miller. And Miller tries to pass it inside. This time the foul goes to Elise Fortman. And three quick fouls there by Columbus Grove in this last two possessions. There's a lob pass, throw it out top, Dylan Miller. Looks inside to Brooks, double teamed, pass goes cross court. And trying to make a move inside was Jackson and Soraya doubled ball. Nesby. Nicole has four fouls, working the lane. Here's another three, it's gonna go up. That one bounced off the rim that time for Fortman. And Ryland Jones in a hurry. Dylan Miller, offensive foul. Now we see Lauren Ockley oh. stepping in. Oh, that was Jackson, excuse me. Yep. Soraya Jackson with the offensive foul. Yeah, Lauren Ockley saw post player coming right at her and set her feet and good call by the officials there. In, in a way, it's not Jackson's fault. The pass led her into that, that contact that took place, but Solid defensive play as well, as you said. Yeah, and you see that a lot of times when those post players aren't comfortable with the ball far away from the basket. And, but a good take there by Ock Moody as, you know, she's still sitting on three fouls as she had she in the had. first half. Abby Steckscholdy, she's going to back up her dribble a bit. And now go to the rim where she will. What do we got? I think got an offensive foul. I think got a shove inside. I think they called I, it yeah. a Pulte. I think you're right. Kendall Palti got her fourth foul as they were battling inside, and she pushed her way to get open. And for a Mustang team that's down nine and would like to get back in the basketball game, every foul now in Columbus Grove is a two-shot foul. 
The only basket in this quarter so far has been by Groves, Elise Fortman. And we played a couple of minutes. Savannah Brooks, left-handed move. I think she traveled. She did. She did. Went to her right and tried to come back to her left. Take a few too many steps. Good idea. She just, yeah, she was a good yeah. idea. She had the right move. She just didn't have her footwork down properly. Jackson will re-enter the game with three fouls. Nesby's back in the game as well. The pair of 23s are going to match up with each other. And we're going to get a timeout. Timeout for us, too. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our free throw sponsor tonight has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTOW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. You can visit WTLW.com. Paulie's open deep on the inbounds, and she gets the basketball, throws it across to a teammate, Akmudi, but she has to travel, keep traveling. Here goes Jones the other way, and Ryland Jones goes the length of the court and scores the first basket of this quarter for the Mustangs. They still trail by seven. Allen East just needs to get some stops now if they want to claw herself back into this game. And you like to see easy buckets there on that layup. Nesby goes to the rim and overshoots it. And the ball gets hit out of bounds then on the rebound effort by Jade Seifker. And Columbus Grove deciding to kind of sit back, pick him up about half court here. Don't want to give up any easy layups with this seven-point lead. Five minutes to go, fourth quarter. Dylan Miller. Bounce pass across the lane, and it goes off the hands of Jackson. Tough pass to catch. It's a three to quarter, at least Fortman blasted in a three. Ryland Jones with a two, and that's our scoring here in this quarter, Nesby, and then back to Palti playing with those four fouls. And she will be contacted by Ryland Jones. Ryland's second foul of the basketball game. Now both teams have four fouls in the quarter, Josiah. Yeah. Could be a lot of free throws before we wrap this one up. Well, Columbus Grove. Gets the ball into Hawk Moody, but it's definitely reasonable for Allen East to double that, double her with 20 points on the night. Hasn't found anything here in this fourth quarter, but it's like Columbus Grove might be trying to slow Doubled it down. Doubled up on the sideline and she bangs it off the leg of Jones. On the 14th of this month, Allen East will go to Van Buren on the 19th. They go to Hard Northern. They finish up the pre-Christmas season by going to Wapak on the 21st of December. So a lot of road games. Oh, nice left-handed effort that doesn't go. And Jones is in a hurry the other way. Steps inside and rolls that one in. Ryland Jones has four and a quarter, 10 for the game. And who hit it out of bounds? It was knocked out of bounds by Aubrey Young. Columbus Grove on the 14th has uh, Ada. And then the 19th, Kaleida. And the Saturday, the 23rd, they have Dolphus St. John. So they're playing home games. Nesby inside, and her layup goes. Nicole Nesby now has seven. Five of those in the second half. And the lead goes to seven. Yeah, good cut out from that out of bounds play from Grove for Nesby. And knowing she was going up against the smaller Jones. And Makes the easy layup. Brooks works into the lane. Footwork was good that time, but her shot was a little bit short. Lauren Akmudi. That big third quarter has not scored here in this quarter, but has been handling the basketball well. 
Tip loose, scramble for it. And we're going to get a held ball that favors Columbus Grove. Kendall Palti back in the basketball game to do the inbound honors. Palti inbounds it and gets it back. She's working the lane. Palti backs down, has to throw it back out on top where she finds Allison Thompson. And then over on the side, Elise Fortman. Nesby inside. Fortman gets a three look. Somebody got a hand on that one. Probably not the shot Coach Schrader was looking for there as opportunity to take some more time off the clock, but now he's opportunity here. See if they can cut into this lead. There's a three that's going to go up, and that three ball goes down for Aubrey Young. Aubrey Young drills a three, and immediately her coach calls timeout. They trail by four. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and on Apple TV. They got it to four, Josiah. Yeah, big shot there by Aubrey Young, and this Allen East team not going away. Um, Columbus Grove was, all, was up by seven. He thought they had possession of the ball. Got a couple turnovers. Got a big shot by there, Aubrey Young. So we'll see what they do coming out of this timeout. I imagine they're going to dial up a little bit of pressure. Uh, don't want to give Auk Moody anything easy. Um, so we'll see what Coach Montgomery decides to do. The Mustangs have called three timeouts. Columbus Grove called two in the opening quarter. And have not called one since then. Also in the game reset, the possession arrow favors Allen East. And both teams have four team fouls, so we're shooting the double bonus situation for the rest of the game. Palti looking, and she finally gets it inbound to Thompson and back to Palti. Jones pressuring her. And Jones got the steal, and Palti fouled her. Kendall Palti will foul out of the basketball game with four points with 2.37 to go here in the fourth. And to the free throw line will go Ryland Jones. Ryland has 10 points this evening, but it's just two for five from the free throw line. Well, this is a situation you want to get back into a ball game. No time coming off the clock. Opportunity to, for two free throws. See if they can cut into this lead. That one's a bit hard. Trying to make it a one possession game. And that she does. 11 points now, Ryland Jones. for stealing free throw. Ball's pushed ahead this time by Thompson. She's gonna get it down and shot goes up and missed. Nesby gets the rebound. Nicole Nesby working inside. And she has to throw it back out top to Fortman. And then Doc Moody. This is where your 90% free throw shooter comes in hand, Josiah. We've got the point guard that shoots free throws that well. Yeah, you'd like to think they've dialed up a play for her, which step back three, and she airballs it. Step back three. Doc Moody has made three of those three-point field goals this evening. But that one came up short. I think that's one of those possessions you'd like to see her attack the rim. See if she can draw some contact, then go to the free throw line and decide to take a step back. And Allen East here, opportunity to see if they can tie the ball game up. Jones working inside, can't get there. Brooks goes to the rim and Savannah Brooks scores. She's got 16 in the game, it's a one point game. Here come the Mustangs. This game has been a game of runs and it was Columbus Grove for a while, now Allen East clawed their way back into this game. It's been a 10 to five quarter in favor of the Mustangs with 100 seconds to go in this one. Here's Jones handling the basketball. Deadly free throw shooter and of course, every free throw now or every foul now is a double bonus situation. Make her give it up. This is Deck Shorty in the corner. 
And they bring it back on top. Doc Moody again, going to trap him again. And she throws it, and she will throw it over the head of Abby Stecksholde. So Alan East trailing by a point will have the basketball. Savannah Brooks has 16 in the game. Ryland Jones has 11. And into the basketball game comes Ruth Meyer, who's played very well defensively this evening and had a basket back in the opening quarter. Jones matched up against Meyer, and she falls down, and her coach calls timeout. Well, this will be a 30-second timeout with 105 to go here in the quarter. Want to set something up? People thought she traveled in the crowd, but she did not. She maintained her dribble. No, and a good call there by Coach Montgomery to realize his player was in trouble and call that timeout. And now it's an opportunity to draw something up on the whiteboard and see if he can get most likely Brooks or Jones an opportunity to, to score here. They have a single timeout remaining, does Alan East. Columbus Grove has three remaining. That's my unofficial count. They don't keep it on the scoreboard here, but I think that's how it's, it's progressed this evening. Check out the website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Sideline out of bounds, Savannah Brooks. And she looks and looks and finally throws it inbounds to Richardson. Jones stepped through and can't score. Rebound by Columbus Grove. They're going to push it ahead with Allison Thompson. She's going to back it out. And she finds Jade Seifker and then Ock Moody. Under a minute. There's a pass inside and we're going to get a travel. Allison Thompson wanted to throw across court, and if it just wasn't there, she traveled. Now we're starting to see a little bit of that youth come out from this Columbus Grove team, and kind of trying to handle this pressure from Allen East. And we'll see if Auk Moody can get the ball back in her hands, but an opportunity here for Allen East, second time where they have a chance to take the lead. Jones to the rim, and finishes! Ryland Jones points 12 and 13, gives her team a lead with 20 seconds to go. Grove has timeouts remaining. All the way to the rim and going all the way to glass was Allison Thompson. She'll draw a foul with 16.1 to go. Allison Thompson, who was the foul on? Savannah Brooks, who picks up her third foul. And here's Allison Thompson, a pair of free throws. She made a three-point field goal in the second quarter. And by the stat page, Josiah, that's her first made free throw of the season. Great time for that. Let's see if she can get a second. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw and put her team ahead. Yeah, and the first one looked really good. That so did. we'll see how the second one comes about. And now here's the Mustangs. They have a timeout remaining if they want. They're working over midcourt. Here's Brooks. Brooks, coach saying go. And her coach takes a timeout with 4.3 to go, their final timeout here in this quarter. Coach wanted to go to the rim, didn't he? Yeah, you could tell her, say go, go. You know, wanted to see if she could draw some contact and Opportunity to shoot some free throws, but now with four seconds, he'll have to set up something here. If you get something that's going towards a goal, you have a chance to draw contact and, and get free throws. A quick shot might get you an offensive rebound. And so a little bit of options, but they can, they must get the ball inbounds. They have no timeouts remaining. And of course, we might well see Columbus Grove decide to see what their setup is, and they take a defensive timeout. So we'll see how this plays out. The WSN Scores app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store score so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app re replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all of the scores. I just did that. 
<laughs> I've been reading that all fall, or a good part of the fall, and I finally got around to doing it this week. Yep, I had to delete <laughs> the old one and get the new one, so. See what Alan East can draw right. up here. Alan East will have the ball out of bounds right in front of their, their bench. And you can see that uh, Coach Brian Schrader's got everybody figured out where they're going to be. He's got his grease board set. And then here comes his timeout. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor this evening. That has been Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. So you can visit them online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. And say good luck to all athletes and go Mustangs. Our free throw sponsor this evening has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 4.3 seconds to go from, well, wouldn't you want this in the opening game of the Northwest Conference season? Absolutely. A little bit of excitement here. As you see, the fans of both sides have really gotten into it here in the last about 30 seconds of the game. And I can imagine Coach Montgomery drawing up play here for Brooks or Jones. A combination of those two, one of them getting the ball and probably attacking the room as they've done all night. So um, we see the Columbus Grove coaching staff coaching their players up to what they expect to happen also. So we'll see what happens here in the last 4.3 seconds. Sideline out of bounds, Savannah Brooks. She's guarded by Ock Moody. Ryland Jones is set up on the right block. And she is being double teamed right now. Here's a pass inbounds, Brooks. Brooks jump shot. Al, these people wanted a foul. Nobody saw it. We're going to go to overtime. We're tied at 44. We're watching high school basketball, WOSN. The Alanis Mustangs outscored Columbus Grove 12 to 6 in the fourth quarter, and we are tied at 45 as we head to the first overtime session. Each team has lost a player through fouls. Taylor Nickel fouled out for Allen East. And Kendall Palti fouled out for Columbus Grove. And we're getting everybody organized here on this jump ball situation. And we'll play four more minutes of the Northwest Conference opener for the 23-24 season. Ball's tipped through the backcourt to Ryland Jones. She had a seven-point fourth quarter to help with that comeback. Here she goes to the rim and got pushed way underneath. Jackson goes up and will draw a contact. See the foul was on. Now this is one thing that we've, uh, we've got to clarify, Josiah. This is considered to be a part of the fourth quarter, so we stay at shooting fouls. Now that was a foul anyway as Ockmoody picks up her fourth foul, but any one-on-one -on -one situations are not one-on-ones, they're double bonus now. Here's Jackson from the free throw line. Bounces off the rim. She has seven points in the game. Four in the first quarter, three in quarter number three. That one was a bit short, and Nesby rebounds. And now he's just struggled here in the second half from the free throw line. Missed some crucial free throws. And Ockwoody takes the ball to the rim and just lays it up a little short. Ryland Jones in a hurry the other way to the rim, and it goes in for Ryland Jones scores in transition. She now has 15 in the game. And trying to get the ball up sexually, and she's having trouble. Finally, she gets it head to Nesby. Good heads up cut by Nicole Nesby to come bail a teammate out. Moody, who had 20 at the end of three quarters, has not scored since then. Here's Nesby inside deep, and she goes up and scores. Wonderful position for Nicole. She's got nine in the game now. Yeah, good call there by Grove as Nesby did a good job of getting into good position down low and just catches it and goes straight up. And Ryland Jones it down. shot blocked by Ab uh, Jade Seifker. Two 
two and a half to go in our first overtime. Akmudi cut off. This is Seifer with the basketball, and then back to Lauren Akmudi, and then Seifer again. Good heads up defensive play by Savannah Brooks. Jones in a hurry again the other way. Ryland to the rim. Good defensive play by Steckscholdy, and Nesby rebounded the basketball, and she was fouled by Dylan Miller. So Nicole Nesby, the six-foot sophomore, will get to go to the free throw line with 2.10 to go. She has not been there yet. Yes, she has. She's one for two there this evening. Nine points in the game, trying to be a double-figure scorer and put her team ahead. And this is where those free throws come with such importance here. She knocks down the first one. She does. Back into the game comes uh, Ella Miller. She wears number 32 for the blue and white Mustangs. Let's be again. Same result. 11 points for her and a two-point Grove lead. Ryland Jones with the basketball, cross dribble. Works her way to the rim, and she scored. Wonderful drive from her. She's got 17 now. Yeah, she made that one look easy. It's a little zigzag in between defenders and lays it up and ties the ball back up. Achmoody throws the ball inside, makes a nice assist pass to Ruth Myers, who's got four in the game. And both teams finding success driving to the rim. And Miller for three, bounces around. Big scramble for the rebound, and we're going to get a held ball that will favor Columbus Grove. Yeah. And down hard on the floor that time was Abby Steckscholdy. And while they tend to her, we're going to take a break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Good to see Abby Steckscholdy got off the floor quickly and under her own power. She'll be able to come back if she chooses to do so, or her coach chooses to put her back in, I should say. Her team's up by two with 91 seconds in the opening overtime. Akmudi double team, can't get the ball in bounds to her. They do find Ruth Myers, and then the ball is advanced by Allison Thompson. Here's Akmudi. Coach Schrader saying spread out. Doubled up is Akmudi. Meyer, Jones pressuring her, and who hit it? It's going to go out of bounds to, to uh, Allen East. Allen Jones got the ball to roll off the sleeve of Jade Seifker. Yeah, right call there by the official as the ball bounced off her leg as both of the players went to the ground. So Jones working, working, and she will be fouled on the floor. Of course, it doesn't matter much, nope. the two-shot foul anyway, but who'd the foul go against? It went against Ruth Meyer, Ruth's third. And to the free throw line will go Ryland Jones. Catches her out of the rim, but goes in. 18 for her. Here comes Abby Steckscholdy back in the game. Did you have the feeling when she left she was coming back? Oh, you know, absolutely. The way she looked. This, I'm not going to be over very long, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I think it looked like she hit her head pretty hard and didn't want to leave this game. And who hit that one out of bounds? It was hit out of bounds by Nesby on the rebound effort as she was pressured by Soraya Jackson. 59.7. And because of the overtime, each team gets one more timeout. So Alan East has one left. Dylan Miller, hands off to Ryland Jones. Savannah Brooks, Brooks for three. And trying to run the basketball down was Dylan Miller, but she couldn't get to it. It'll be Grove basketball with a one point lead. And yeah, Coach Montgomery talking to Brooks and wanting her to 
drive to the rim, but a timeout now by Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove will take a timeout with uh, 41.6 seconds to go. They still have two remaining. As I said a moment ago, Allen East has that one timeout that we talked about a second ago. TV44 and WS Center, nonprofit organization supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size. That's a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. You can visit WTLW.com. <laughs> Opening night of Northwest Conference women's basketball. I can tell you've seen enough. Adam Huber from Kaleida, he and his coaching staff were here watching this one. <laughs> they play these teams in the near future. Yep. Coach says, I think I've seen enough of this one. One of the really good basketball coaches and good ADs in our area that we deal with. It'll be Columbus Grove basketball out of bounds. And they have to go 94 feet here to get uh, into the scoring area. And inbounding the basketball is Allison Thompson. What if they were trying to run a home run play? Nope. Here's Steck Schulte, and Steck Schulte will be fouled by Ryland Jones. Jones has three fouls now. Looks like Coach Montgomery was okay with that foul, knowing that he didn't want Grove to run too much time off the clock here, and forcing Columbus Grove to earn these free throws. Abby Steck Schulte has not been to the free throw line yet tonight. In fact, she has not been to the free throw line yet this season. That was her first effort from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Here's her second opportunity, trying to put her team up two. Jones rebounds. It's three on two the other way. Jones splits the defenders and overshot it. Rebound, kick out. Akwudi has it stolen. Here's Savannah Brooks. She works the lane. She goes up and shot long, but she was fouled and she twisted an ankle at the same time. Or did she cramp? That's Looks got like the cramp it might be a cramp. Done. Yeah. <laughs> the foul will be assessed to Allison Thompson. Savannah Brooks is three for three at the foul line this evening, and she's going to get two here on the shooting opportunity with 21.8 to go. Savannah Brooks, 5'8", senior, averaging 16 and a half points per game. She's got 16 tonight. Ooh, shot it a bit hard. Just rimmed out on her. Second opportunity, Brooks, to tie the game. Which she does. Timeout, Mustangs. We're going to take a timeout also. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. 21.8 seconds to go. The Mustangs have taken their only timeout that they had available to them in overtime. We have a 51-51 score. Each team has scored six points in the first overtime. The possession arrow. I'm looking to see the official stand right in front of it. Here's the inbounds to Nesby. She's doubled up right away. And her coach is going to take a timeout. Well, let's set the game uh, here as we now have 17.7 .7 seconds to go. Both teams are in the shooting bonus, the two-shot bonus. Columbus Grove has just taken a timeout. They have one more remaining with 17.7 .7 seconds to go. And the possession arrow does favor Allen East. So they threw the ball into the big girl, but she couldn't find uh, Akbury to get the ball up court and had to take a timeout. Yeah, kind of found herself in one of those difficult positions, got a little bit too far into that corner, and Allen East did a good job of doubling her. So we'll see what Columbus Grove decides to do. Looks like out of that last timeout, they had a play drawn up, changed it there um, at the last minute because um, I think they saw Allen East having that player all the way back. So we'll see, you know. I can imagine they want to get in Alk Moody's hands. Yep. Uh, but he knows she's going to get doubled, so we'll see if they can figure out a way to get her the ball in these 
waning seconds here. Well, Allen East cannot foul because that will put uh, Columbus Grove to the free throw line. And Columbus Grove does have a timeout should they get the ball into the scoring area and not have an opportunity. Coach Schrader still has one more timeout remaining. Difficult plate to inbound the ball on the sideline for Allison Thompson, but they're not going to pressure her. They're going to go to a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press instead. Nesby back to Thompson. Here's Akmudi. She works the middle of the floor. Spins into the lane, jump shot. Akmudi scores with 5.5 to go. And, well, I said a little while ago, my timeouts were not always accurate <laughs> because Alan East called it that timeout. Akmudi had not scored since the third quarter. A big basket for her there gives her 22 in the game with five seconds to go. Josiah teams ahead. That's why she's an all-conference all player. Well, that's what you expect out of your best player is to, to show up when, when needed. And you saw that there. And you saw Alan East, two or three players around her. She was just able to turn um, to her left and get it back on her right and knock down that big shot. And, you know, that was a tough shot. It was a tough shot, make. yes, under pressure. And now the Mustangs, they have to go the length of the floor in five seconds and get a shot up. Of course, they've got a person that can do it. They can get the ball into the hands of Ryland Jones. Yeah, and Alan East, you know, you don't have to settle for a three. You can attack the rim. You know, just they haven't shot the free throw very well um, tonight, but we'll see what Columbus Grove decides to do because, you know, do you uh, take a couple seconds off and maybe foul and force them to make two free throws or um, you let, you know, Alan East try to stop them from getting going full speed to the rim. Looks like Savannah Brooks is going to be the inbounder. Ryland Jones is going to set up over on the right side of the, of the floor. And she's being guarded. Let's see how this play works out. She's being guarded by Ruth Myers. She's done a pretty good job defensively this evening. Here comes the double team, too. Look, look, Brooks throws, tip. Here's the pass ahead to Jones, Ryland Jones. She gets a shot up, that hits the rim and falls short. Well, now he's got a look, got it into the hands of Ryland Jones. It just wasn't a clean look and a quality win, a good battle from both teams and a quality win for Columbus Grove to start off the conference and remain undefeated. That it was, looking very quickly at this, my score sheet, Jones ended up with 18, Savannah Brooks had 17. On the other side, Lauren Achmoody had 22. Nesby had 11. They got a lot of scoring for a lot of different girls this evening. Quarter scores for the Alamese Mustangs, 16, 8, 9, 12. They had six in overtime. And they're going to fall to 4-1 and 0-1 one and oh and one in the conference. But that's a good basketball team for Allen East. Yeah, absolutely. You saw that today. Some of their main players stepped up. As you said, Savannah Brooks, Ryland Jones, 18 and 17 respectively, you know, and they just continued to attack. And, you know, really it came down to free throw shooting um, in the end and a big shot by Lauren Ockmoody um, there with about four seconds to go in the game. For Brian Schrader's team, they had quarter scores of 13, 9, 17, 6, and they had eight in overtime. They won the overtime 8 to 6 for their 53 points this evening. They are 4 and 0 oh now. They're 1 and 0 oh in the NWC. They're also one and now in the Putnam County League, and they last won a league championship in 2020. Got to step up towards winning one this year. Yeah, and, you know, you got a player like Lauren Ockmoody, you know, who, who can lead the team. We saw that big at 20 points there. Uh, didn't score there in the fourth quarter, but came up big with that shot. And, you know, a, a good quality win to start the year, and you want to see the momentum continue for this Grove team. We want to thank our sponsor this evening. That would be Jones Excavating and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Jacob O'Neill has done our camera work and our sound work and everything else, and he will take this back to Beatty Road and edit it all together for us. We appreciate Jacob's effort this evening. Columbus Grove opens Northwest Conference play with a 53-51 win in overtime over the Alanese Mustangs. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.